Today on this Sant Mat Satsang podcast edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio Productions, the mystic verses and teachings of Sant Jayadeva, found in the Sikh scriptures of India, or Adi Granth, and we'll even hear a couple of passages from the Gita Govinda of Sant Jayadeva. Jayadeva is actually one of the earliest saints of recorded history. I'm sure he had a spiritual master or sat guru as well, but he's at a kind of fog line of recorded history. And further back, we just have the mists of time, the fog of history, with not much information known about who the saints were prior to the time of Sant Jayadeva during the 12th century. He was a contemporary of another early saint, one of the earliest of the saints, Vishhobar Keshar, Sant Namdev's spiritual master. Before those two, we don't really have much information that has survived the centuries. Jayadeva was born 1170, And in Gurmukhi, in the Sikh world, he's known as Bhagat Jaidev. Sant Jaideva was a Sanskrit poet during the 12th century. He is most known in India for his epic poem called the Gita Govinda, which concentrates on Krishna's love with the cowherdess Radha. This poem, known as Gita Govinda, presents the view that Radha is greater than Krishna. He is considered an important text in the Bhakti movement of India. Little is known about the life of Sant Jayadeva, except that he was a loner poet, an interesting term, loner poet, and a monk celebrated for his poetic genius in eastern India. Jayadeva is the earliest dated author of hymns that are included in the Sikh scriptures. The Sikh scriptures of India include the writings or hymns of several Sikh gurus, early classic saints like Jayadeva and Kabir, Namdev as well, and a couple of Sufi poet mystics such as Baba Farid. There is a book about the Gita Govinda of Sant Jayadeva, a book of comparative mysticism and religion, comparing the teachings of Jayadeva with Sufism, called Unveiling the Garden of Love, Mystical Symbolism in Leila Majun and the Gita Govinda. Here is a reading from it. Unveiling the Garden of Love Like the flute, the human is also an instrument. Man becomes God's voice, God's mirror, and ascends and reunites with God. This relates to the story of creation that starts with the command of the Almighty Spirit, Be, and so it is. Or be, and all became. To be and being or existence is the start of the circle of descent and subsequently the ascent towards becoming perfected man, which is the whirling dance, the whirling dervish ceremony, what it represents. The general rule is that everything in the universe tends towards its origin. Man, in the vicinity of his beloved, was watered with God's spiritual light, as was the reed of the Ne, once watered by a stream or a lake. The Ne flute, of course, is very central 
in Sufi mysticism, including Rumi poetry. The references to the flute in Gita Govinda associated solely with Krishna and the bliss of his sport and speak primarily of joy and union. Thus Krishna's flute makes sprightly music. For example, we read in the Gita Govinda of Sant Jayadeva, He plays your name to call you with his sweet reed flute. He cherishes breeze-blown pollen that touched your fragile body. In woods on the wind-swept Jumna bank, Krishna waits in wildflower garlands. In association with the sweet reed flute conveys an idyllic lover's tryst. The flute is conspicuous as an instrument of alliance. Krishna does not call Radha by name, rather he plays Radha's name on the flute, implying that the sound of the flute will be recognized and identified by Radha as the call from Krishna. In Vaishnava symbolism, the sound of Krishna's flute is particularly associated with the divine call. This has been expressed by the author Kinsley, who wrote, Krishna's flute is an extension of his beauty. Not only is it the most beautiful sound imaginable, it imparts the essence of Krishna's intoxicating nature. In another example from the Gita Govinda, the lure of Krishna's flute is expressed in the following words. Sweet notes from his alluring flute echo nectar from his lips. His restless eyes glance, his head sways, earrings play at his cheeks. My heart recalls Hari or God here in his love dance, playing seductively, laughing, mocking me. On the one hand, Krishna is sweet and alluring. On the other, he is laughing and mocking. It beckons by its association with nectar, the symbol of immortality. And this immortality is an extension of God's lips and breath. Yet at the same time, it plays, this flute plays, to break down all resistance of the ego of the self. The effect of Krishna's flute is that the cow herdesses are powerless to resist. A reading from Unveiling the Garden of Love, comparing Sufi mysticism with that of Vaishnava Bhakti. The teachings of Sant Jayadeva in the Gita Govinda. Those who are initiates of Surat Shab Yoga appreciate the imagery of Krishna as the divine musician, summoning souls to awakening, calling them, calling out to the, the souls of the universe. Krishna is by playing his celestial flute his celestial song of God, or Bhagavad Gita. Souls are summoned to awakening, are awakened by the sound of the flute. The reading from Unveiling the Garden of Love about the teachings of Sant Jayadeva and the Gita Govinda really illustrates the adjacency of three great spiritual movements in 12th century India. Sufi mysticism with its tradition of love for the beloved Supreme Lord, a path of love and devotion very close to that of Krishna Vaishnava Bhakti, all about love or Bhakti, Prem and Bhakti, and the Sant tradition of India. 
Sant Jayadeva was at the crossroads of all three of those, very much like Mirabai and Ravidas were. There's some overlap between the Sant tradition and Vaishnava Bhakti. Those Sants are claimed by the Vaishnava tradition as well as the Sant tradition in the same way that Kabir and Guru Nanak are claimed by both Sants and Sufis. All of those 12th century spiritual movements in India could be described as branches of this tradition of the lover and the beloved. Mystic verses of Sant Jayadeva in the parlance of the Sikh world, Gurbani by Bhagat Jaydev in Sri Guru Granth Sahib. Jayadeva was one of the earliest Sants known to history. Sant Jayadeva is the earliest dated author of hymns that are included in the Sikh scriptures. Page 526 of the Guru Granth contains a hymn of Sant Jayadeva. In the very beginning was the primal Lord, unrivaled, the lover of truth and other virtues. He is absolutely wonderful, transcending creation. Remembering him, all are emancipated. Some commentary on that verse, the foundation of the spiritual journey, is found in that beginning or opening verse. Remembering God, all are emancipated. The term Simran, often used by the masters, means remembrance. It implies that souls in this creation have forgotten their spiritual origin. They have forgotten God and lost themselves in this material creation. But have the potential to awaken. They have the potential to remember again. They can be awakened perhaps by hearing the sound of Krishna's cosmic flute they are summoned to awakening again. And this is the path of Jiva Mukti, salvation, liberation of the soul, emancipation, remembering again. The term Simran, which means remembrance, is used in the Sant tradition to refer to the practice, the spiritual technique of repeating sacred names of God as a way to spiritualize daily life. And it's also the first stage of meditation practice in the Sant tradition, the repetition of sacred names of God. Sant Nam Dev, dwell only upon the beauteous name of the Lord. Dwell only upon the beauteous name of the Lord, the embodiment of ambrosial nectar and reality. Bliss and reality. 
says Sant Jayadeva, remembering him in meditation, the fear of birth, old age, and death will not trouble you. From these opening verses, we get the main essence, the quintessential teachings of Sant Jayadeva. Remembrance of God is the key. Remembering Him in meditation is the way. And it leads to the end of the fear of birth, old age, and death. There is a bliss in the repetition of God's name. This is the path of Jiva Mukti, or emancipation, remembering God again. Other key teachings present in the mystic verses of Sant Jayadeva. If you desire to escape the fear of the messenger of death, then praise the Lord joyfully and do good deeds. Bhajans and Siva. These very words of Sant Jayadeva are sung in India, as is the entire Adi Granth, the Gita Govinda as well. These are sung as hymns of praise, of worship. Doing good deeds leads to much selfless service, a life of selfless service, and requires little explanation. Pretty straightforward, do good deeds. Implying selfless service, ethics, and respect for others. I'll link at the bottom of this video on the channel today a Sikh video that includes this hymn of Sant Jayadeva as music. These words put to music. I'll share the link below so you can enjoy the teachings of Jayadeva in their original form. We're reading the translation here, so it's like reading the book of Psalms, but these words are sung. These words are recited. This is all music. Says Sant Jayadeva, in the past, present, and future, he is always the same. He is the embodiment of supreme bliss. If you seek the path of good conduct, forsake greed and do not look upon other men's property or the wives of others. Renounce all evil actions and evil inclinations and hurry to the sanctuary of the Lord. Worship the Immaculate Lord in thought word and deed. <laughs> Ethics certainly do matter, according to the teachings of Sant Jayadeva. Ethics and actions in this world. It's good to say that sometimes because there are teachers out there, there are paths that say ethics don't matter, that this is all an illusion, so nothing matters, our actions in the world don't matter, but they do matter, and an enlightened soul will do things much differently than those still caught up in the illusion of this plane of samsara. Ethics do matter, according to the teachings of Sant Jayadeva. (music) 
What is the good of practicing yoga, giving feasts and charity, and practicing penance? asks Sant Jayadeva. The Sants often say things along these lines. Sufis do too. They say, why bother to go on the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca? Who cares about institutions? As Huzur Baba Sawan Singh once said, the only organization we have is just the satsangis and the master. No need for gigantic organizations, institutions, rites, rituals, feasts, fasting, charity, external mumbo-jumbo. According to the science, the true temple is the human body, and going within is the true worship in the true temple. Meditate on the Lord of the Universe, the Lord of the Universe, O oh man. He is the source of all the spiritual powers of the cities. The main focus of Sant Jayadeva is the beloved Lord. This path of the Sants is in the tradition of the lover and the beloved. The soul focuses all of their attention upon the Supreme Being, and nothing else gets in the way. Not even the various tools of the spiritual journey are techniques. These tools or techniques are not turned into separate things. Even soul travel or meditation or visions of light and sound are not divorced from this God Bhakti. Even having a spiritual master or guru. Mostly the focus is God Bhakti, if you notice in the teachings of Sant Jayadeva and other classic Sants of India. There is Master Bhakti, there is some Guru Bhakti, but mostly God Bhakti. There are references to visions of light and sound or soul travel through the realms, through the heavenly realms, but they do not become a separate enticement. The focus is the Supreme Being. The focus is the destination. So as supernatural a path as this is, journeys through the astral plane or some lower region, are not a main enticement that becomes a sort of idol or separate thing, divorced from the Beloved. All of these tools or techniques are all a part of the journey back to the Beloved. They do not become used or turned into idols or detours along the way. And this is also true of cities or powers. Cities are described sometimes in the teachings of the Sants when one meditates or even does Simran and develops the power of concentration to some degree. There can be the manifestation of these supernatural abilities or cities. There are kind of two currents going on in the teachings of the Sants regarding cities. Sometimes cities are described as temptations or obstacles. These are powers or abilities that one can develop, but one can be distracted by them, like some of our soul-traveling Western light and sound paths. One can be distracted by gifts, enticed by the gifts, distracted away from the giver. And these cities or powers or abilities, as useful as they can be, to living a life blessed with divine grace, things going our way, insights, good fortune in life, as useful as those cities might be, they can also serve as distractions, 
and detours and the science warn against them. So both are going on in the teachings of the science. Sometimes cities or powers are described as blessings as a result or fruit of meditation, but sometimes they are also described as temptations that one should not be too fixated upon cities or powers or guru bhakti or light or sound or astral travel or soul travel or remote viewing or some of those things or organizations and institutions and temples and politics to the degree that they become monsters idolatry distractions or angels that say okay Stay on your knees, John, and worship for a while. The unethical messenger might say that, but the ethical angel says, Get up, John. Focus on the Supreme Being. Don't worship me. Don't worship these cities. Don't worship the angel. Don't worship the astral vision. Meditate on the Lord of the Universe. The Lord of the Universe, O oh man. He is the source of all the spiritual powers of the cities. Jayadeva has openly come to him. He is the salvation of all in the past, present, and the future. The second hymn of Sant Jayadeva that is included in the Sikh scriptures or Adi Granth begins on page 1106 of the Adi Granth. Sant Jayadeva. The breath is drawn in through the left nostril. It is held in the central channel of the Supmana and exhaled through the right nostril while repeating the Lord's name 16 times. Breathing in through the left nostril, Ida. Breathing retained in the melody of Nada. Exhaling through the right nostril, or Pingala. A yogic technique referred to here by Sant Jayadeva, which sounds weird to most people, but is a practice of some yogis in times past in India. You'll find references like this in the Kabir Book of Prayers as well. In the early writings and hymns of the Sant tradition, the teachings of Kabir, Namdev, Jayadeva, and others, is the language of the yogis, the not yogis, sometimes called Nath yogis, including the teachings of Garaknath, which included breath. There are some references to breath and Kundalini in the Sikh scriptures as well and that harkens back to an earlier time of the Nath yogis and Garaknath, who practiced Surat Shabd yoga along with some other forms of yoga and austerities. They were the astronaut, athletic yogi meditators of the 10th century, 11th century in that period. And sometimes the language of the Nath yogis turns up in the early Sant literature. The teachings of Kabir are sprinkled with Nath yogi terminology, in fact. Says Sant Jayadeva, I am powerless 
My power has been broken. My unstable mind has been stabilized, and my unadorned soul has been adorned. I drink in the ambrosial nectar, the blissful nectar, intoxicating nectar. Within my mind I chant the name of the primal Lord God, the source of virtue. This is one of the earliest known references in the Sant teachings, the Sant literature, to manas jap, or mental chant. The repetition of a name of God done with the tongue of thought in the mind. There are some references to verbal simran, the verbal chanting of names of God, but for the most part in the Sant tradition, the repetition of sacred names, or simran, is done not with vocal cords and tongue, but with the tongue of thought, a chant within one's mind, or manas jap. Says Sant Jayadeva, within my mind I chant the name of the primal Lord God, the source of virtue. Swami Vyasanand, in his book, The Inward Journey of the Soul, more recently explained that mental simran, the mental repetition of names of God, has a power of concentration that's thousands of times greater than that of vocal or verbal chant, the verbal chanting of names of God. Mental chant takes you within and is a very powerful thing, much more powerful than vocal chant. Thus, the teachings of the Sants is always, or mostly, about the mental repetition. There are some references to vocal singing of names of God, too. But mostly, it is done as a manas jap, or mental chant, a mental form of simran. Within my mind, I chant the name of the primal Lord God. The source of virtue says, Sant Jayadeva. My vision that you and I are separate has melted away, said Sant Jayadeva. This verse has become a prayer directed directly toward God right in the middle of a hymn about God and the spiritual journey of the soul. Here is a prayer, a spontaneous prayer, right in the middle of that. This is quite common in the teachings of the Sants. There'll be hymns and then all of a sudden Guru Nanak or Kabir or Namdev is speaking directly to God, a spontaneous or a static prayer embedded in a hymn. This happens quite frequently in the teachings of the Sants. My vision that you and I are separate has melted away. Says Sant Jayadeva, I worship the one who is worthy of being worshipped. I trust the one who is worthy of being trusted. Like water merging in water, I merge in the Supreme Lord. I meditate and contemplate the luminous triumphant Lord. I am lovingly absorbed in the nirvana of God concludes Sant Jayadeva. Nirvana, the pleroma or fullness of God, Timeless state or Satchkhand, Satlok, 
beyond samsara. A state of akal, or timelessness, far beyond the influence of call or time. A place of rest, eternal peace, beyond the world of action, beyond the light and sound, beyond the creation, the God state, sometimes referred to as Anami Desh or Radha Swami Dham, the ultimate reality, the real reality that all of the meditation practices have been transitioning us to. I am lovingly absorbed in the nirvana of God. says Sant Jayadeva. Jayadeva does have a spiritual charge just to read his words make you feel a little bit of what he felt his love for the beloved his union with the supreme being a drop merging back into the ocean of love an ocean of nirvana of Sachkhand of Satlok Radhaswami Desh or Anami Dham Akal, the timeless, eternal realm, the divine rest. Thanks for joining me today for this short Sat Mat Satsang podcast, exploring, enjoying, celebrating the mystic verses and teachings of Sant Jayadeva, one of the earliest known Sants of recorded history, who contributed the earliest hymns to the Sikh scriptures or Adi Granth. Check below for a link to those hymns being recited, the Gita Govinda, and one of the hymns from the Sikh scriptures I've been able to locate at YouTube. There is a Sikh channel which has on it a recital of page number 526, the first hymn of Sant Jayadeva I read earlier click on the bell icon to get alerts about new programs appearing on this channel as they say like and subscribe follow this channel and you'll hear from week to week more Sant Mat Satsang podcasts more editions of Spiritual Awakening Radio Exploring the teachings of the Sants, Sufis, and Gnostics, the path of the Masters. My name is James Bean. To get in touch with me, my email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Or you can send me a text at this number, 508 603 9381 and visit my website spiritualawakeningradio.com Ek Unkar Satnam Jai Satnam Jai Guru Radha Swami Blessings in the divine love, light, and sound of the Beloved. <laughs> <laughs>